بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي طلبة وطالبات الصف الحادي عشر كل عام وأنتم بخير وأهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم في حلقة متجددة من درس على الهواء درس اليوم مخصص لمادة اللغة الإنجليزية مهارات أحببت التنويه هنا فقط بأن مواعيد الدروس والحصص الدراسية قد تغيرت لهذا الشهر الفضيل ولذلك وجب عليكم متابعة هذه التغييرات في الأوقات والمواد في الفواصل الزمنية التي سوف تكون بين الحصص نترككم الآن مع فاصل قصير ثم نعود إليكم لاحقا تابعونا Welcome again, dear students. Uh, today we are going to start Unit 6, lesson number one. And by the end of this lesson, students will be able to read a conversation about the legends of King Arthur and read about Leonardo da Vinci. So in general, we are going to read for guests and details. Now I want you to get your books and open your students' book, page number 73. The page will look like this. First of all, we have the title here, Mysterious. The meaning of the title is something that is difficult to understand or to explain. This is the meaning of the word mysterious. And we have here an example. It's one of the great unsolved mysteries of this century. Let's imagine that we are talking about virus corona, and because we don't know how it starts, so we can say that this virus or this virus is one of the great unsolved mysteries of this uh, century or till now. Now, look at the painting that we have in this page. You can notice that we have different shapes, different lines and different colors. This kind of painting does not represent anything in reality. It doesn't represent people, bodies or faces. It doesn't um, represent for example, animals or plants or objects in reality in life. And I brought some other examples like this painting, for example. This is another example. And this is the third example. You notice that these are mixed of shapes and mixed of colors, which has no specific meaning. These are called abstract painting or abstract art. This kind of art conveys concept you won't find in physical or visual reality, as I mentioned. Abstract artists free, freely use color, shape, and form to communicate intents that are left to the viewer's interpretation. It means that you have your point of view to explain or to interpret this one, this kind of painting, uh, based on the feeling that you have, based on the ideas that come uh, into your mind. Here we have several questions and here we have vocabulary box. Now we are going to explain 
the meaning of all these words found in this uh, box because I believe that it's very important for your students to understand the meaning of all these words. If you don't understand the meaning of all these words, you are not, you are not be able to answer the questions or the following uh, questions. So let's start with the first one. And by the way, I've got the meaning of all these words from Oxford Dictionary. So let's start with the first one. The first one here, auction. It means a public sale in which things are sold to the person who offers the most money for them. And you can see the first photo here. You can note that we have a group of people and we have a painting here or a picture. They are going to buy this and the one who will offer the most money he will get this uh, photo. This is called an auction. The second one, autobiography, the story of a person's life written by that person himself. For example, if I want to write about my personal life, the book will be called autobiography. If I write about somebody else, this one will, call, will be called biography. So the story of a person's life written by somebody else is called biography. Classic, accepted or deserving to be accepted as one of the best or most important of its kind. Collector, he means a person who collects things either as a hobby or as a job. And I want you to look at this photo. You can notice that this man is sitting on a sofa in his house. And behind him on the wall, there are different paintings or different pictures. And also we can see some sculptures and antiques. This person is called an art collector or painting collector. He collects all these things and put them in his house. Cookery, the art or activity of preparing and cooking food. And this can be found also in different kind of publishing to uh, showing how to prepare uh, different types of food from different parts of the world. Detective, a story in which there is a murder or other crime and a detective who tries to solve it. Expert, a person with special knowledge, skill or training in something. Historical, connected with the past. For example, this book is a, is a historical book because it talks about the past events. It talks about the past events. And finally, we have humor. Humor means the quality in something that makes it funny. The ability to laugh at things that are funny. And you can see that this book is a humor book. Next, let's move on. Landscape. What do you mean by landscape? Landscape is a kind of painting of a view of the countryside. This is a style of painting. Look at this picture. When you draw trees, rivers, houses, anything related to the nature or landscape, it's called landscape painting. Mystery, a story or a film or a play in which crimes and strange events are only explained at the end. Original means painted or written by the artist rather than copied. So for example, the Mona Lisa 
painting or picture is or the original painting is found in for example in Paris in the museum of Paris which is belong to uh, Leonardo da Vinci that we are going to talk about later painter he is the one who paints picture this is an artist who paints pictures reference means a book that contains fact and information that you look at when you need to find out something particular for example here in uh, encyclopedia dictionaries are some kind of these references science fiction a type of book or film that is based on imagined scientific discoveries of the future and often deals with space travel and life on other planets. You can see this picture, for example, it represents a kind of science fiction here. Sculptor is a person who makes sculptures. What do you mean by sculptures? This is a sculpture. So sculptor is the person who makes such uh, sculptures. Thriller is a book or play or a film with an exciting story, especially one about crime or spying. So there is some kind of thrilling. Value, how much something is worth compared with its price. This is the meaning of value. I wish that you've got the meaning and you understand all this meaning of all these words. And now we will move to start our first task. And we are going to use these words uh, in the box. So open your book, page 73, task one, same page. Question number one. Put the words from the vocabulary books into two groups, art and box. Okay, what do you mean by art here? Art means the use of the imagination to express ideas or feelings, particularly in painting, drawing or sculpture. This is sculpture and this is painting. And now we have the same words and we want to classify them. We want to put them in different groups. The, the first one is related to art and the second one is related to uh, books. So let's see the answer of this question. So auction is related to art, collector also, expert, landscape, original, painter, sculptor, value, all these words are related or are in the group of art. Books. These are some different types of books can be found in different libraries. For example, autobiography, biography, classic, cookery, detective, historical, humor, mystery, reference, science fiction, and thriller. I hope that this is clear for you. And now let's move to the second question and the second task. Now, what we are going to do is to also put these words into two groups. Only the words which are belong to the group of what? Of books. So let's see. Okay, put the types of book into two groups. Fiction, this is group number one, and non-fiction, this is group number two. What do you mean by fiction? Fiction means an invented story, a story which is, which is an imagined by the writer. It's not a real one, but non-fiction is a fact-based writing. 
So for, for example, autobiography. Now we mentioned that autobiography means what? That you are going or you write about your personal life. It means that you will write something related to the reality, to the fact. You will mention some facts about your life. So this word is belong to what? To non-fiction category. I hope that this is clear. For example, science fiction here, it is something not related to the, the world or the reality. It is something uh, we imagine that will happen in the future, for example, or in the space. Okay, so this is related to fiction. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the answer of this question. Okay, so classic, detective, historical, humor, mystery, science fiction, thriller is related to fiction. Sometimes uh, some of these um, categories can be also non-fiction. If we put in our mind that we are talking about real stories, but they are, for example, thrilling stories, okay? And for example, also humor, you can notice that in both categories, in both columns, we wrote humor. So non-fiction, for example, autobiography, biography, cookery, because it is fact-based uh, writing, kind of writing, humor, and reference. Okay, so let's move on. Now we are going to listen to a conversation between Clue and Tom. As you notice from the picture that Clue is reading a book. Now we want to know what kind of book or what is the title of this book that Clue is reading and both Clue and Tom are going to discuss the content of this book. So let's discover the title of this book. The book is called The Winter King. The Winter King. This book is written by Bernard Conwell. Bernard Conwell. Bernard Conwell is an author of historical novels, mystery and thrillers. He has written international bestsellers, famous books, include The Sharp Stories and The King Arthur Stories, which is found in this book, in this particular book, The Winter King. And he was awarded an OBE in 1988. What do you mean by OBE? OBE is an award made by the Queen to people who have made a significant contribution to the life of the country. Now, let's have some background information about Arthur King or the Arthur King before we start listening. Okay, so King Arthur, if he existed at all, because still there is no evidence that this personality has ever existed, so is thought to have ruled over part of Britain in the 5th or 6th centuries and defended the country against the Saxon invaders. He was surrounded by a circle of knights with whom he met around a round table so that each would be equal to the others. It is, however, uncertain where Arthur lived and several possible ancient sites have been suggested. At the location of this famous castle, Camelot, he owned a famous sword, Excalibur, which was thrown into a lake when Arthur died. There is little or no historical evidence that Arthur and his knights ever 
existed. Now we are going to listen to the conversation and answer this question. Here we have four sentences. This is number one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. And we need to decide whether these sentences are true or false, right or wrong, or maybe there is no enough information about the information available in this sentence. So we have three options, whether true, false, or not enough information. How can we answer such a question? We need to listen to the conversation between Clue and Tom, and then try to understand the conversation and the content that, that they are talking about. And I have said that they are going to talk about King Arthur in particular. And we have mentioned some information about him to make it clear for you when you listen. And then read the sentences and decide if it is true or false or uh, there is no enough information. The sentence number one, Clue and Tom have read the original legends of King Arthur. The second one, Tom thinks that King Arthur really existed. King Arthur probably lived in a castle in Wales. Finally, Clue believes that the stories about King Arthur are not true. Okay? So, this task is in page 74 in your student's book, and this is task number three, and now we are going to start. Unit 6.2. Oh, you're reading The Winter King. I love stories about King Arthur. I think they're fantastic. Are you enjoying the book? Yes, it's really good. It's supposed to be based on the original legends of King Arthur. But the legends can't be true, can they? I'm not sure. It's really confusing. I know that there was a leader who lived in ancient Britain called Artorius. He was a hero warrior and fought in many battles. So the stories could be true. I agree. There are so many books and stories about him and the Knights of the Round Table. They must be based on real people. I agree. Maybe some of the knights were real. I mean, they're the real heroes in lots of the stories. But Sir Lancelot is a fictional character. He can't have existed because he wasn't mentioned in any of the early stories. He was made up by a French writer. Oh, so... What about all the places in the story? Actually, some of them could be places in England and Wales. Arthur's castle, Camelot, might have been a real castle in the south of England called Cadbury Castle. I looked it up on the internet. It's just like the ones in the stories. It's an enormous castle, so it was big enough for Arthur's knights, his family and all of his soldiers. Everyone could have lived there together, just like in Camelot. <laughs> and the lake? When I went to Wales last year, we visited a lake called Ogwen. The local people say it could be the real Lake Excalibur and that Sir Bedivere threw Arthur's sword into it. I've been to that lake too. There are quite a lot of lakes in Wales which might be Excalibur Lake, and there's also a lake in Scotland called Loch Arthur. But Sir Bedivere lived and died near Lake Ogwen, so I think this must be the real Excalibur Lake. Right. And didn't Arthur die in Wales? Maybe. He died on the Isle of Avalon, where they took him after his last battle. But nobody knows exactly where it is. There's an island in North Wales called Bardsey Island, which may be Avalon, but there are other islands which could have been Avalon as well. Mm, I see. So the original writers must have invented all the stories. I mean, even if Arthur existed, there's no evidence. That's true. But one day, somebody might come across some real evidence and solve the mystery. 
So now we are going to answer the question here. So let's start with the first one. Clue and Tom have read the original legends of King Arthur. Is it true or false here? Actually, it is false because here they said it's supposed to be based on the original legends of King Arthur. Here they are referring to the what? To the book they are reading now. So this book which they are reading now based on the original one. So it means that they didn't um, read the original one. The second one, Tom thinks that King Arthur really existed. There is no enough information about this because here he said, um, that's true, but one day somebody might come across some real evidence and solve the mystery. So he is not sure about this. So we cannot say that he thinks that King Arthur really existed. King Arthur probably lived in a castle in Wales. This is wrong. It is false because it's not in Wales. It is in uh, Camelot, not in Wales. So, and the last one here we have Clue believes that the stories about King Arthur are not true. It's true. How can we know this? You can follow this paragraph or this conversation here. I see, so the original writers must have invented all the stories. I mean, even if Arthur existed, there is no evidence. So she believed that the stories about King Arthur are not uh, true. Let's move on and have another question. Here we are talking about uh, modal verbs. Modal verbs such as what? Such as can or could or must have may, might, all these words are called modal verbs. These are verbs and they are called modal verbs and they are called modal, modal because they need another verb after them. But here we are talking about the meaning that each one of them conveys when it is found in the sentence. Now, the question is saying that read the sentences one, two, three, one, two, three from the text and match them with the correct meaning A to C, from A to C. Now, if for example, we read this one, the legends can't be true. The legends can't be true. What can you understand from this sentence? and why they are using this modal verb, can't, not using another one. So there is a meaning in this uh, kind of verbs. So the legends can't be true. It means what? It means that it is impossible. So this is B, I think it's impossible. Now if we say, the stories could be true. The stories could be true. So it means that I think it is possible. So this one is A. The last one here we have, they must be based on real people. They must be based on real people so I think it's almost certain. So almost he is sure about this. So this is C. So this is regarding modal verb. And now let's go back to our previous vocabulary. And now we are going to use them in different uh, sentences. We have auction 
collector, expert, original, painter, sculptor, and uh, value. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words, and we have one, two, three, four, five gaps. So there will be two words extra. Okay, let's start with number one. Works of art are unique. What does it mean? What is the word that suits this place here? Original. Original works of art are unique. Now, are often or often has a very high, a very high what? A very high hmm? value, a very high, high value. A work of art can be bought by a museum or a private. Do you remember buying and selling group of people, painting? Yes, you are right. The word here is collector. A work of art can be bought by a museum or a private. So the museum or the person can collect these paintings and put them in the museum, for example, or put them in the house of that person. An art cab knows about the history and works of art. This is what? Think about it. Expert. An art expert knows about the history and works of art. Famous paintings are sold. Sold where? At? Right. Auction. Auction. Okay, good. Let's move on. We are going to read about Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, we have two questions and we need to answer these um, two questions. So let's start with question number four and I want you to open your student's book page 76 and 77. So read the text quickly. Who was Leonardo da Vinci? So this is the first part of the question. Who was Leonardo da Vinci? The second part of the same question, what was his most famous work? Okay, number five, read the text. Explain why Leonardo da Vinci was one of the world's most well-known geniuses. So here we need an explanation. Why Leonardo da Vinci is one of the greatest uh, people in the world. So we have two questions. The first one, who was Leonardo da Vinci? We want to talk about him. We want to know something about him. And then we need to know his most famous work. And then we need to explain why he was one of the world's most well-known uh, geniuses. Okay? So this is a picture of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. A man of genius. He, it means he is very talented. He has different types of skills. He's, he was very smart and genius. Let's start reading this text and then we will try to answer the questions. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci was one of the world's most well-known geniuses in both arts and science. He was born in the 15th century, a time when most people were interested in art. He was a painter, sculptor, and I want you to notice here, 
He was a painter, sculptor, architect, engineer, inventor, musician, mathematician, and scientist. So notice how many skills he was good at. One, two, three, engineer, inventor, musician, mathematician, and scientist. He was one of the most talented people who has ever lived. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in the small town of Venice in Tuscany, Italy. He spent his childhood days outdoors studying birds, plants, and nature. When he was 14 years old, his father sent him to Florence, where the young boy became an apprentice to Virtue. This is the name of a person. The famous Italian sculptor and painter with Verrocchio, young Leonardo was trained in drawing, painting, and sculpting, but also chemistry, metal working, and mechanics. So imagine how genius he was to be able to work in all these different fields and to be good at all of them in the same time. So that's why the title here is A Man of Genius. Now, let's continue. When Leonardo was 30 years old, he left Florence of Milan, for Milan. So he left Florence to Milan. He became the engineer of the Duke of Milan. He tried to create weapons that would keep the city safe. Leonardo was fascinated by technology and the workings of machines. So he was fascinated by technology and the workings of machines. That's why he becomes a mechanic. He designed hundreds of different things in his notebooks. Helicopters, bicycles, submarines, bridges, and more. Let's continue. Leonardo went back to Florence in 15, and the Duke of Valencia, Caesar Borgia, gave him a job as his engineer. Around that time, Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa. This is the photo of the Mona Lisa. So, Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa, the most famous, please concentrate here, the most famous painting in the history of art. Then in 1516, he moved to France and became first painter, architect, and engineer of King Francis. At that point, he wasn't able to move one of his arms but wrote in his notebooks, I shall continue and never give up studying or working. Please note out this phrase that was written by him. Although he was not able to move one of his arms, one of his arms, he couldn't move it, but still, he wrote in his notebook, I shall continue, so he will continue, he will not stop, and never give up, never give up studying and working. 
And this is a very important advice that we need to take into consideration when we work and when we study. Although there will be some difficulty in studying or working, but we need to be patient and never give up until we reach the point or the goal that we want to reach. Leonardo died on the 2nd May 1519 and French legend tells us that he died in the arms of King Francis, yes, or whatever it is pronounced. Okay, so let's go back to our questions. Now, how can we answer such question? Now, imagine that we have this question in the examination. We need to read uh, the text and we need to scan it or skim it in order to understand or in order to get the answer. Now we need to look at the keywords that we have in the question and we try to look up these uh, words in the text or maybe sometimes we can find the synonym, the, another word which had the same meaning of the word we have. So who was Leonardo da Vinci? Here we need to have what? To have an explanation about him. And what was his most famous work? Notice that sometimes questions uh, is not in order. What does it mean? It means that sometimes you will find the first question and the answer of the first question you will find it what? Where? In the last paragraph. And maybe the last question, the answer of it is in the first paragraph. So you have to be careful. And you have to uh, understand all these uh, kind of tricks uh, in the questions. What was his most famous work? I think you remember, you have remembered this, this one. Because we came across earlier. Now let's go and answer this one first because what it was very it was very uh, clear okay okay so the mona lisa this painting was the most famous painting in the history of art not only in the history of art, also in the old work that Leonardo da Vinci had. So this is the answer, the Mona uh, Lisa. So let's go back to the question again. Notice that the question and the answer had the same word, the most famous, the most famous. So most famous is the key uh, word here. Who was Leonardo da Vinci? Leonardo da Vinci was one of the world's most well-known geniuses in both arts and science. So the word was and who, the WH question, can indicate the answer in the text. So here, Leonardo da Vinci, instead of the word who. Because who refers to somebody. So Leonardo da Vinci was one of the world's most well-known geniuses in both arts and science. If we want to give more examples or more extra information about Leonardo da Vinci, we can add some information like Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452, for example, in a small town in Venice, in Italy, and so on. We can find different uh, information here about, about him. Okay, so um, let's find 
the answer of the last question here explain why Leonardo da Vinci was one of the world's most well-known geniuses why he is considered to be a genius and why he is talented the answer is very clear here notice that he was a painter he was sculptor he was an arctic architect engineer inventor musicians mathematicians and scientists so because of all these fields that he were he was good at so he was considered to be genius and to be well known all over uh, the world now let's check the answers here so the possible answer of the fifth question is Leonardo da Vinci was a man of many talents the talent that we mentioned he was painter sculptor architect engineer inventor musician mathematician and scientist he was one of the most talented people who has ever uh, lived so I wish that you've got an idea how can we answer reading questions by taking the keywords in the question into consideration and try to find them in the text and then to find them or to find the synonym of them and then you will get the answer easily and to bear in mind that the order is not uh, always there so sometimes the first answer will be in the last uh, paragraph and the last question or the answer of the last question will be in the first uh, paragraph uh, this is the end of our lesson today and I hope that you have enjoyed it and you get some benefits out of it and inshallah we will meet uh, after one week so keep safe